Okay, so uh, two Saturdays from now, which I'm told is October 19th, but may or may not in fact be, uh, we're holding a game design workshop for everyone. So we're going to go over some uh, fundamentals of game design and the, uh, the process of designing games. So if you guys have heard of the Agile development cycle, that's what we'll be dealing with. Uh, okay, anything else? Will we be making a video game, or will we be doing physical games? Uh, we're not going to make a game during this process. We're going to uh, just uh, use a... Uh, we're going to make like a, a card game and then explain how the process applies to uh, the electronic media. So, yes. And that's where the real design work happens, where you modify yourself. And where did you learn about this format? I learned about this format at GDC, which I will be giving a talk about very shortly here. Okay. So next announcement, we're going to hold a game competition soon. We're going to <laughs> so we're going to hold starting next Monday. We're going to hold a competition where the premise is to make a game in three weeks. So you're going to have three weeks to make a game. And you can't start it now because it's gonna, there's a secret theme that you have to call it. And we're going to announce that theme when the competition begins. And we're going to send out more info on an email and an RSVP. Um, you don't need an RSVP for a competition. It's a, a join the competition form. And so you can, you can work alone or you can work in teams. And you can make either a video game or a non-video game, as long as it's a game. So if you don't have time to program or if you don't know how to program, they can make like a card game. Or maybe a sport. Um, question? Maybe. <laughs> yes. 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 We're, we're going to have. <laughs> you get a pat on the back. <laughs> we're going to have prizes. We did, we're not sure what they are yet. No, we're not going to tell them what they are. We don't want to do that either. They're either going to be really cool, or it's going to be something that we found. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's a good chance it could be really cool. <laughs> they are cool. Oh, we have food. Oh, yeah, sure. Let's pass around. Actually, we'll just earlier just in a minute. Or the guy who gave the to us. Yeah, you can't have any of those. So, yeah, yeah it's pretty good. Pass around. That's me. We scheduled in a tangent. Okay, so we announced the game workshop, which is two Saturdays from now. The game competition, which is next Monday. And this Friday, we're going to have a game night. So we're going to come in here and play games all night. I'll send out an email. I didn't send it out today because I wanted you to, to see the email for this meeting first. <laughs> I think, is that all? Um, sure. Am I allowed to make a paper game? Yes. Can you say that? Yes. Or would it? You said it was too big a video game. Yeah, something else to consider would be the whole game jam RSVP thing. Game competition or game jam? It should be up yeah. um, soon. So, no, the game jam. so the game, when is the game jam? The game jam will be on Veterans Day weekend, which is um, from November Saturday the 8th to Saturday, November, November 10th. 9th to Monday, November the 11th. It's a three-day weekend. And the game jam will be starting Friday night. We'll be sending yeah. out the RSVP form um, very soon in the future, hopefully. Yeah. And if you know for a fact that you'll be going to the game jam, um, put your name there early so we can accommodate for your meals and the room. And yeah. So the game jam is super fun. It's basically make a game in 48 hours. This time. This time is last time was 36 hours. Um, we're going to talk more about the game jam before the meeting. But it's super fun. Don't miss it. That's all. Okay, it's my turn to shine, I am told, <laughs> allegedly. Okay, so all right. for anyone who doesn't know me, I'm Tyler Wallace. I'm uh, one of the founding members of this club, and I'm a computer science and math major. I'm a senior this year. Um, 
I'm going to give a talk on GDC, which is the Game Developers Conference, which is held every year in uh, Los Angeles, California, at the Moscone Convention Center. Uh, this year... Huh? Los Angeles or San Francisco? Mm, San Francisco. San Francisco, that one. <laughs> Slight the, difference there. It, it, is, it is in California, possibly. Um, <laughs> right, it, it is in San Francisco. So. Yeah, I... I, I am told by locals that it is pronounced Moscone, so. Makes sense. Uh, right, okay, so this year uh, GDC is taking place during our spring break, which is awesome. That means you don't have to miss class if you go there. It's a week long, um, and it's a, it's a really good idea to go there. So uh, why is it a good idea to go there? That is a great question. Uh, <laughs> First off, it's a really good networking opportunity because the entire industry will be represented there. So if there's a studio you want to work with, they're probably there. Uh, like Blizzard, Microsoft, uh, Bungie, all those guys, they always make appearances there, as well as a whole bunch of indie studios, which are usually showcasing their games. Uh, sometimes they're hiring, but indie studios, you know, they don't always have the budget to be hiring new people, but you know, there's always that opportunity. Uh, and there's just the opportunity of meeting anyone who goes there. So if someone, say, if there's a bunch of people who are not currently working uh, for a company or on a project, you could probably set up something with them if you're adept at such things. Uh, yes, definitely control their minds if you can. Uh, it's also just really great fun. Uh, GDC, I, I've been there twice, and it's probably been the best experience of my life, and that's not an exaggeration. Uh, yes, and it got better each year. What can I tell you? It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, okay, and just going to GDC, you get a lot of knowledge just about how the uh, how the industry works and of uh, the people in the industry. So, uh, the first year I went to GDC, I ate lunch with uh, Kim Swift, who was the uh, the lead designer for the Portal games and Quantum Conundrum, I believe, and uh, Will Wright, who does everything. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> yes, you should definitely go because that happens to you. you uh, Livio. Yeah, <laughs> because then you too will be able to break Livio. Uh, <laughs> right, right. Uh, it's it's a good place to get inspiration for a new project. So if you're gonna work on something and you don't know what you want to work on, you can go to GDC, and all sorts of insanity occurs there. Like uh, last year, I went to the uh, the IBM talk. Uh, they were um, they were demo demoing their uh, perceptual computing technology, which is uh, it's basically Kinect for PC. So uh, they gave away free like Kinect cameras that you can plug into your PC and develop on because they have their awesome dev kits and they. Uh, during that talk, they talked to they uh, they went over a bunch of technologies that are also compatible with their their uh, dev kits. So that's good. And uh, a final really good reason is if you go to GDC, you can put that on your resume because even if you just pay to go there, it's definitely something you want to mention if you're applying for uh, a, a game position. Just I was at GDC this year doing this stuff. What you know. Uh, but if you can, yeah, if you can, sort of the best opportunity is the uh, CA program, which are the conference associates. Uh, I was part of that program twice. That's how I managed to afford to go to GDC because their tickets are extremely expensive. Uh, what what you do as a CA is uh, you work the event. So you would be the person holding doors open and working the information booth and. Uh, you know, guarding the doors at the talks and uh, making sure people like squish together in the talks so you can fit as many people as possible in the rooms without breaking fire code. Um, uh, but the, the CA, uh, in exchange for the work you do there, which is about 20 hours over the course of that week, you get an all access pass to the event and you're a CA, so it's sort of like more than all access pass, but 
don't, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how do you become a CA? You, uh, you apply for the CA position. Uh, they sent out an email recently saying that it was uh, open, but for reasons that I am not entirely privy to, they had to uh, withdraw the application process for a few weeks, and later that'll they'll be opening up in a few weeks where you can uh, submit an application. You'll fill out some basic information about who you are, and you'll write an essay for them about why you deserve to be a CA, basically, uh, why you're a good fit for the CA program and the people who are part of the CA program. Um, right. Okay, so now some uh, some tips for applying for that position. The essay is really the most important part. Uh, there are other parts, like you wanna make sure everything is absolutely correct and professional on that because it is extremely competitive. Um, yeah, every year they have easily uh, 10 times as many people apply to the position as they have positions. So you wanna make sure you're in top shape to do that. You, you know, no grammatical errors, no spelling mistakes in your essays, none of that stuff. Uh, yeah, they're short essays, but they need to be perfect essays. Yeah, I think they're 1,500 characters. Yeah, 15 characters. You have to write an essay in 15 characters. Um, yeah. You don't have a good name, they won't take you. Right. And so all the advice that goes with writing essays normally applies here, double fold. Uh, you want to make sure you write your essay, and then you rewrite your essay, and then you rewrite it again. And then make sure you review your essay, and then you rewrite your essay again. Yeah. Have, have, you know, get input from other people. Uh, uh, some good advice would be uh, get like a close friend of yours or a family member to, uh, to sort of write that essay for you. Not, not like have them do the work, but have them explain why they think you're awesome. Because a lot of times people have trouble doing that for themselves. So if you find yourself in that situation where you're not sure what to say, ask other people because usually other people are better at telling you sort of your best qualities if you like them and they're not people. Uh, okay, so uh, other than that, just uh, my experience as a, uh, as a CA and at GDC. So I said I went there two years. Um, during the first year, the sort of the most memorable things I did were the game, uh, the game design uh, workshop, which was two days. Uh, the game design workshop we're doing is modeled after that one. So if you have somehow access to the previous year's uh, workshops, uh, possibly through the GDC Vault, that's basically what we're going to be doing. Um, and that, that gives a really good idea of how uh, of how developing systems work, whether you're developing the game as a whole system or individual systems within the game, say the, the mechanics, the narrative, whatever. So any aspect of the game we'll refer to as a system, or at least I do, because computer science. Um. <laughs> All right, the, the, another thing that's important about uh, GDC is they have the Game Developers Awards, uh, Game Developers Choice Awards which uh, as a CA, I worked both times. Uh, the first year I went, I think, I actually ran into Livio there. So I was one of the CAs that was holding the doors open while everyone was leaving. Uh, yep, and followed him out because technically I wasn't supposed to be holding that door open. I was just doing it because, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do as a CA. Be nice and make everything better for the people who are attending. Um, uh, the second year, I went to the uh, Technical Artist Boot Camp, which was uh, most of one day. Uh, I think it was three hours. Uh, and I got to learn a whole bunch of tips and tricks for the trade because I'm an aspiring technical artist. Uh, ooh, a bunch. Um, I don't even know. Many. Yeah, uh, there's many, many workshops and tutorials, talks, and everything. The, the last three days are all and yep. Yep. And, yeah. 
yeah, there's the uh, the expo floor at GDC, which is where uh, everyone brings or all of the uh, the companies who have a booth at GDC will be there. They'll be displaying their products. Uh, they'll be uh, trying to sell their latest game or their development technology. And you get to learn a lot of cool things there. Like uh, I. Uh, I specifically focused on uh, uh, companies who were who were talking about like marketing and things like that, marketing, public relations, stuff like that, because that's not my area, and I wanted to learn how that works. Basically, uh, other you can learn all kinds of things there. Uh, for instance, uh, there's uh, I saw some alternatives to like Maya and Blender and uh, 3ds Max there that were uh, coming out last year. Um, they have new hardware and stuff that they that they display, and they also have many many games. So, uh, the Independent Games Festival is there. So that's where all the, uh, the the sort of the top indie games are on display. You get to go there, play them, uh, talk to their developers who are hanging out, and it's much fun to be had and much to be learned. Um, uh, the second year I went, oh, I'm talking about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I also got to uh, work a, a workshop or a, a talk that was uh, women in game development. So it was uh, just a long, uh, what is it, an hour long talk about uh, various issues in the, uh, the games industry. Uh, I think that one may have been posted publicly somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't on camera for that because the camera was like beside me and I was guarding the door. But yeah, uh, yeah, I was I was totally there. Yeah. Uh, and then. Yeah. And then there's again the Developers Choice Awards, which I, I worked I got to work those both years. And uh, last year was notable because I, I met a guy who was a, a disabled veteran who was running his own uh, indie studio, and I've been talking to him quite a bit for the past year. So that's always fun. That's the sort of thing that can happen when you go to GDC and hang out with all of the other developers. So. Uh, and I already talked about the IBM talk. Uh, oh, business cards. If you go to GDC, make sure you have business cards and resumes and all of that stuff. So make sure if you're intending to go there as a hiring opportunity, make sure you bring good clothing. Sort of goes without speaking, but some people forgot to do that and they're like, oh, I got an interview with like Blizzard. It's like, I um, guess I'm going in jeans and my ratty sneakers and stuff. <laughs> um, whoops. I think that's kind of yeah. standard. <laughs> <laughs> it can be, but. It's yeah, you want to. Yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> Take showers, that is recommended. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, Cindy. Yeah, she's just. She's. Just, Okay. Go. So, if you were to get business cards, uh -huh. where do you print your business cards? Uh, online. So, okay. what is it called? Oh. It knows, no, it's yeah. Vista Prints, that one. Yep. And no option to design Yeah. I would not buy that yet. Why out is a plus? But definitely make sure you have business cards. And when you get business cards, it's very important that you write down on the card who you were talking to. I know it'll say on the card, but make sure you write it down anyways and what you talked about. So that's. Give them your card? No, that when they give you their card. So you write on their card who they are, what you talked to them about. So that's yeah, that's standard practice. That could be you meet so many people you forget who's who. Oh. So you want to make sure you know who you were talking to. So when you send them an email or something later on, you're not like, oh, you're this that that person I spoke to by by the water fountain. They're like, no, <laughs> um, sorry. Okay. Uh, yes. 
well, your name, your contact information, and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and your title if you're working for a company, also your company. So it's really just standard business cards. And, yeah. You could, you could, you know, your business card is really. Yep. Yeah. So basically, anyone could mention it. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, the last thing. No. Okay, the last section I have for my talk here is uh, some of the the fun things that you get access to as a CA. So, for instance, the first year. Uh, I was a CA. I had uh, I was given access to the Diablo 3 beta before it came out, and I was given access to the Guild Wars 2 beta. So that was some pretty cool stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, that was the last year. Uh, I think I got something else the first year, but I don't remember what it was. Um, yeah, that's one. Yeah. So I got games both years, but. <laughs> But that's not the reason you should go, because like $60 game for a $1,000 ticket, kind of math no equals good. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the fun things that all of the CAs do is uh, we have uh, like witch hunt games, which are really awesome. Uh, I, I don't want to go into detailed description of how witch hunt works, but it's really fun. If you've played Mafia, it's basically that. Um, uh, the, the CAs just have an awesome community, so you spend a lot of time uh, talking to people, uh, getting to know each other. You, uh, you know, you don't, you, get, bleh, you make some good friends. I, I, like I talk to a lot of my uh, CA friends still, so that's great. Uh, we got to play uh, Johann Sebastian Joust, or Joust, because it's Swedish and I don't pronounce the J's. But, um, that was fun. Uh, it's basically a game where you use the uh, the PlayStation 3 motion controller and you try to like knock each other's controllers out of their each other's hands. So that's yeah in real life like it's it's a, like a party game. So you yeah, know video game without a video. Yeah, it's, it's basically <laughs> if you and I were playing, I would have my motion controller over here and then I'd be trying to slap your motion controller <laughs> because what happens is like. It, it uses the accelerometer, so if you like jiggle it too much, then it trips and you're like dead. So, what you have to do is protect yours and slap everyone so else's. Don't, like, hit it out of their hand yeah, you, you want to make sure that like they can't reach yours, so there's much dancing that goes on. <laughs> but, um, uh, it's actually so you're supposed to dance to the game. That's kind of the idea. Most people don't, just because they're all like, "Oh, this is combat, me, he man," but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had fun dancing with it. So. Uh, of course, we played Cards Against Humanity because, you know, you must. Uh, there's some, some, I think, CA, uh, CA exclusive games we play. There's one called Looping Louie, which is awesome. Uh, it's, it's a physical game that I'm pretty sure was designed for, like, four-year-olds, but... <laughs> I don't know. It's very difficult to describe the awesome that is Looping Louie. There's the little plane, and it goes around, and it'll knock your chickens off and kill them if you don't like hit the little paddle that bumps him up so he doesn't kill the chickens. But <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Oh, and uh, each year I've gone, the, there's been a League of Legends tournament that's been hosted by uh, Riot for just the CAs, which is pretty awesome. I'm actually high enough level to compete in that tournament this year, so. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on my rune pages for like months just so I could do that. Uh, and uh, one thing they do is uh, all the CAs will have prototypes for the games that they're working on. They'll come in and they'll work on, uh, the, they'll display them for everyone. So if you have a game that you're working on, it's a great way to get it play tested. Uh, I'm planning on doing that with the game I'm working on right now, hopefully get some feedback from my CA friends, well, assuming that I get in again, but <laughs> uh, you get to play everyone else's uh, prototypes, which is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to give feedback on their games and just play them, see what's going on. Um, and that is most everything, so are there any questions about GDC?
the view. <laughs> Tips for becoming a CA. Uh, okay, so when you're applying to be a CA, there are a few things you should realize. Uh, the CA, the people who are going to decide whether or not you're allowed in, are not so interested in your ability to make games. They are a uh, a customer service agency because that's what you do as a CA. You hold open doors for people. You man the information booth. You do customer service sort of things. You'll be working with people, and so what they care about are your people skills. So you should not just go off for your entire essay about you know your technical expertise because they don't care. Um, <laughs> that is not what they're interested in. So you should be very aware of what you're applying for and what they want. So uh, typically CAs are asked not to give specifics of what they look for, but go to their website, read what CAs are expected to do. You should be able to figure out what they do, and if not, then you probably don't deserve the position. <laughs> uh, uh, some other tips. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I gave some good tips earlier about writing your essay. Make sure you know you've talked to like your friends and stuff, and people give you good recommendations for uh, you know what qualities about yourself you should talk about in your essay. So that comes from both the uh, both realize what they're looking for and also realize what you have to bring to them. So you want to tell them why you you are good for that position you don't want to be you don't want to be overly passive about like oh this is what I'm about and you know I'm, I'm pretty good and stuff you, you want to say like what you can bring to their organization that makes it worth their time to give you a thousand dollars worth of all-access pass so um, or it might even be more expensive it might be like two thousand dollars $200,000. Yeah, but still, it, when you think about the amount of work you do, you work about 20 hours over that week, $2,000, math happens, that's like $100 an hour. So that's, uh, yeah, you are, you need to be really competitive with the other people who are applying. You don't want to be nasty. You just want to make sure that you are presenting yourself as strongly as you can. Your best. So. Yeah, you want to put your best foot forward. Yeah. Uh, question. Is it worth it to get a student at SOPAS or at SOPAS for an audio track class? I am told no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am told that is a massive waste of money. I Don't do it. I two years ago, and it's kind of good if it's like your first GDC and you just want to see what it is, and if you're not sure about, any, about spending money. Um, but then after that, I definitely would not buy it again because what am I going to do? Same thing all over again? Mm. Because the exit path only gives you access to the career pavilion, which is where all the people hiring are, and the expo, which is where all the, what, what do they do at the expo? They have. They just they display sell, their products. Yeah, They're basically, products. it's yeah. a, it's a yeah. giant so advertisement a giant, fest. Yeah. 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 Really. yeah. The IDF pavilion is there too. Mm -hmm. talk to the oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot to mention. Yeah, I forgot to mention they also have a career pavilion. So there's the expo, which is the expo floor where they try to sell you crap, and then there's the career pavilion where all the companies are set up, and that's where they give interviews and like check resumes and you know just meet with prospective hires. So they have a whole area just for that. So that's a good idea, especially if you're meeting like recruiters in person as opposed to just submitting like electronic resumes online. It, people definitely remember when you meet them in person more than when you just you know send them a resume that is honestly probably checked by a machine most of the time anyways. So. Uh, any other questions about UDDC? I can talk a little bit about my Your experiences. Yeah. Switch yeah, mics. Don't actually drop the mic. It's worth more than you think.
So I went to GDC two years ago. I did not go last year because I didn't have, have money. <laughs> but I saved my money for two years, and I'm going to go definitely. Well, All right. spring yeah, it's spring break this year, so I don't even have to worry about missing class for it. Okay. Um, so when I went, it was actually, there are three of us from the club who went. Me, Tyler, and another Tyler. <laughs> um, I ended up rooming with Tyler, so we shared it in a hotel room to save money. Um, meanwhile, Tyler went with the CA hotel, so he shared rooms with other CAs. Um, so I was, since I had the Echo Pass, I was there for three days. So GDC is five days long. It starts on Monday and it ends on Friday. Um, if you get an all access pass, you, you get the whole week. If you get an expo pass, you start on Wednesday and then you have Thursday and Friday. There, there's a student pass, which you buy on site. Like you show up, buy a student pass. You cannot buy one beforehand online. Um, it's not worth it. <laughs> the student pass only gives you access to the career pavilion on Friday. And it's super crowded. It, I, I hear that it's not worth even going to the Korea Pavilion on Fridays just because of how crowded it is. Um, the Expo Pass does not give you access to any of the cool talks that they're always giving. I, I tried to sneak in to some of them, but security was very tight. <laughs> all, those, all those CAs blocking my way. <laughs> they, they give you like little... So if you get an Expo Pass, they actually do have like these little fake talks that they have. It, they're more like poster sessions, like where they have like a research poster, um, and they people are talking in front of it about it. Um, it's not that great. <laughs> um, so when I went to GDT, I spent my time on Wednesday, I think, at the Career Pavilion, and then um, at Wednesday night, that's when they have the awards show, and that was actually very cool. It was a Game Developers Choice Awards, followed by the Independent Games Festival Awards. It was so cool. <laughs> um, and that's when I met Tyler there, when I ran into him. And Tyler tried to get us into the CA lounge or something, and they stopped us. <laughs> Security is so tight. <laughs> um, so on Thursday and Friday, I spent all of my time at the Expo, and specifically at the Independent Games Festival Pavilion. Just playing all of the indie games that got nominated for the IGF and talking to the people who made them. That was actually very cool. Just talking to these really smart people who made these cool things. And it was after the after GDC that I decided to work on that project that turned into Magnetball. And the whole idea of it was to make something for the Independent Games Festival. And submissions for the Independent Games Festival end on Halloween. So it's too late for that now. <laughs> But last year was a lot of fun, even though we didn't get nominated. <laughs> if we did get nominated, um, that would have been a like a free trip to GDC, sort of, or to any game summit pass, really? Maybe. Well, I remember I didn't have money to go to GDC last year, so I, it was like my super crazy plan to get to GDC was. Become a CA, and then that failed. Be nom get nominated for IGF, and then that failed. And then I don't think I had another plan. <laughs> break down and cry. <laughs> oh, break in? Like on a helicopter? <laughs> I, I, wa I will listen to Will Wright talk. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically my experience. Would there be any way for us to organize for next year to get the club to go, like in some sort of group rate or? So GDC is in March, mm -hmm. um, and there they did not even start selling passes yet. So we are actually in the pro we're gonna start the process of applying for club funding to buy passes for members. And we yeah. If we can all go, that'll take a ton of money. <laughs> um, I think so. So we need to figure out how to get club funding for this, though, because there are several avenues for funding. We can ask ASUA for it. 
and ASUA is like the club management thing on, on the university. They will fund, I think, up to three people. And then after that, we can go to the department. Yeah, three, not 30. Only three. Um, we could maybe ask the computer science department for funding. Ooh. If maybe. <laughs> we'll go to one and then the other. And then we'll go to ECE department. <laughs> Oh, so how much are the tickets? Do you have them on there? Uh, yes, I, mean, I know the all access, the all -access pass. pass is like fifteen hundred bucks. Well, no, the er the early bird pricing is nine nine nine. The early bird pricing is fifteen hundred. Oh, that's the all access pass. The regular is near two thousand. So. Okay, it, the main it, there's a main conference pass which is not all access. That's nine hundred ninety five dollars for early bird pricing. We're aiming for early bird pricing, which ends on February. There's no way we're going to not get early bird pricing. Yeah. <laughs> That's not an option. Um, then there's the, the next level down. Uh, on below all access and below the main conference pass is the summit and tutorials and boot camp pass. And that basically gives you access to only the tutorials but not the talks. Is that true? What, what does it say if you scroll down? It's Tuesday only. Monday and Tuesday only. You can't see the GDC Isn't that a summary of what the the week is gonna have? Well, you you just won't be able to attend the main conference sessions. Right. I wanna go all week. Mm. <laughs> yeah. GDC Vault. Yeah. So GDC Vault is the they record every talk and everything that they do on video and then they upload it to the website called GDC Vault and they have a lot of free stuff on there like free samples <laughs> but like real, some really good talks they will usually make them free and that will act they use that as like a marketing thing so you see how awesome GDC is and you want to go to learn more cool stuff yeah that's everything <laughs> Would finding a sponsor for this book be a viable option? Like a business? Like a business? Riverman Media. <laughs> it's, I guess it's possible. If we were making shirts, now would be the time to go find one. Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> Unless. No. <laughs> there isn't any we'll look into every option. And well, so if you become a sponsor for a club, what's in it for you? You get your name out, and you can write it off as like community involvement. Yeah, that one. IEEE. <laughs> no, it's mostly that a company they look good by adding uh, community involvement. It's like, oh, look at us, we're active in the Tucson community. We sponsor the local game club and. That kind of makes that promotes them, and they can actually have it as a government write-off. So uh, it's really a win-win for them. I'm gonna look into that. What companies? Yeah, we just need to find someone, and yeah. we would probably have to like put their name on. Oh yeah. On our logos. On our advertising. On our. On our. On our T-shirt. <laughs> I'm going to say on our shirts. We get water bottles. <laughs> your, shirt, your shirt has a motor on it. <laughs> so, yeah. But I will definitely pay for my own pass. So if we get funding for things, it'll go for other members. Uh, I was asking because you sound really dope and I want to go. Yeah. yeah. So I remember one, so the, the other Tyler who's not here who went to DDC, he got an all access pass. And I think he got that because he got a scholarship that he was able to spend money on whatever he wanted. So he used it on DDC. So maybe we could buy a scholarship.
<laughs> we'll get like every single possible revenue stream to go into GDC. <laughs> we'll have. <laughs> Are you gonna come to the weekly game dev car wash? <laughs> Steal their car and then you charge them for a car wire. <laughs> 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 We could also yeah. do percentage nights at like a restaurant, but I don't right. think I don't think that's gonna bring in a significant amount. We could sell stuff. We could sell our games, make a game and sell it. But that's like a long-term plan, I, unless the three-week game competition, make a game in three weeks and sell it for big bucks. <laughs> Everyone will buy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much the meeting. Mm. Now zooming is thinking. Mm. Yeah, project update. Didn't you say you finished something? Want to show it? Sure. On the TV? <laughs> oh, iPad. Do we have iPad cables here? Yeah. Yeah. What's this? Oh. Really? Yeah. Looks like a phone guy. No, it doesn't. It's still not the same as the regular At least it looks oh, symmetrical. Thanks to me. And the gun's in the it's pretty cool. Yeah, they're this will not help with the project. Profile of things smaller so they can fit more hardware in the device is what the right. idea was. Oh. Yeah. It's the way of the future. <laughs> I know people are. I know people complain about it, but it's like so yeah, you wanna it's for better hardware inside. Yeah. And I'm okay <laughs> with it. We're complaining about it now. <laughs> Complaining about people complaining. Okay, this this is a game of a la it's called laser bike racing and damn it I don't know how this is gonna work okay but anyway. Okay, so there's there's like 13 people in the server online, and there's there's really 13 people there right right now because it's online on Roblox, and what you do is you race with your laser bike, and it's like Tron because you can kill other people with your path, and you also collect gold, and and you collect your caused collisions, and you have health and you know a max speed. And right now the race is starting. And collisions start 10 seconds after the race starts. So that was a design decision so that no one dies at the very, the very beginning. Uh, he's just like new very Yeah. Just showing us the game as millions of people die. <laughs> okay. So ramps give you a speed boost and. Gold, gold gives you oh, gold, obviously. And then later on, at the end of the race, if you finish it, because you might die, <laughs> if you finish it, oh, I actually, I actually got hit. But if you finish it, then you get points awarded, and the points awarded is based off of 
the game mode, and right now the game mode, the most important thing is time, so we've got to finish the time as quick as possible. And then the next, mo the next most important thing is gold, and then collisions is the second most important thing, or the third most important thing. And there's a points awarded equation, and there's not much to do with points right now besides buy ramps in the practice arena, but I'm planning on making points, like allow you to customize your bike more to make it look awesome. Because right now it's just, it's pretty cool, but it's just a, it's just a, a texture or a, a mesh color. And so each race takes about two minutes to do. And I'm not really an, anywhere near anyone. Yeah, I'm either that far ahead or there's some people ahead of me. Yeah, there's <laughs> there's some people ahead of me, but there's also people behind me. Oh, I hit a ramp. I mean, I hit an obstacle. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to try to take this guy down. How long did it take you? Um, I started this about three and a half weeks ago, I think. And, and what happened was Roblox releases a, a gear item every Friday, and this is edited from it. So I didn't design the, the mesh of the gear or the, the way that it, like I didn't script how it makes the path, but I did edit it a lot, and there's a lot of different things that, that this game has that the regular gear doesn't have. So in a way, it's part Roblox's game because they had someone that actually designed the gear item, but, but then the gear item is edited a lot is to, like fix, a to fit the game. Uh, you put something, you remix. Yeah, yeah, remix. Okay, so in this race, the most points awarded goes to Damaged Water, and he got six points. He collected nine gold, caused eight collisions, and finished the race in 135.1 seconds. I was the best time with 132.8 seconds. And the best gold collector was that same guy. And then I was the best collision causer, and I caused 12 <coughs> collisions. Great. Thanks. Oh, and... For anyone that's interested how much, like, what the audience of this game is, right now there are, I ran, an, I ran a bunch of ads on Roblox, and right now there are, uh, I'm checking right now. How many players are, are on the game? That's what I'm looking for. One hundred ninety-six. So it's it's right there on the games page, and then if I scroll up to the most popular, then it's right there. So nine, eighteen, twenty-seven, thirty-six, forty-five. It's number forty-six on the games page right now. Okay.